Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Mastry. Seeing someone turn 150 just doesn't happen for any of us, right? We don't live that long. But when it's a business or a community or an organization celebrating that milestone, 150 years, we can all agree it is something to be celebrated. And tonight we do just that with the YMCA celebrating 150 years. We will look back in the next half hour at its history and how is a place for fitness going places where many could never have imagined more than a century ago? We begin with where it all started. Here's WWT's John Chapman. Omaha was a rough and tumble place, you know, in the mid 19th century. And there was nothing really beyond bars and saloons to, to entertain young men. In 1868, bylaws for the Young Men's Christian Association were introduced to Omaha, giving young men something else to do other than hang out in bars and brothels. The YMCA provided lectures and social events for men. The YMCA was interested in improving the spirit, mind, and body of young men. The first few years, the primary focus was just meetings, um, leadership meetings, a lot of religious study classes, Bible study. As the city grew, the YMCA grew, offering more programs to young men. I mean, it was, yeah all kinds of um, recreational activities, but then also you know, education was another major focus. They, classes for literally everything, advertising, scuba diving, you could find all kinds of classes to take. Um, during the Great Depression, there was a really wide variety just so that they could train people to do everything to get them a job. The YMCA changed to reflect the needs and interest of the community. In November of 1890, the interest was in Nebraska football. The University of Nebraska played its first football game against a team from the Omaha YMCA. Before they were the Huskers, they went through several names, but uh, in 1890 they were known as the Old Gold Knights. And the very first game from the University of Nebraska was played here in Omaha against the Omaha YMCA football team. And Omaha YMCA lost 10 to nothing. 150 years later, the YMCA is still here and still a big part of the community. Now, the Young Men's Christian Association is attracting more than just men. Vicki Halbert retired from the YMCA after close to 40 years of work. We're including women. We're more inclusive. Uh, we've gone into the fitness area for women. The Omaha community has different needs now, and the YMCA is meeting those needs. Daycare is a major concern and vital need of the community, and many people are now into health and wellness. One of the best things about the YMCA is that every day we evolve with the public that, that needs us. So the community, everything they need, we have been able to evolve. There are 10 YMCA centers across the Omaha metro area. YMCA officials tell us as the city evolves, the YMCA will continue to evolve to meet its needs. How does the Y continue to evolve? Most of us growing up knew it as a gym and swim. This next story demonstrates exactly how times have changed. I'm glad you're back. Well, I'm glad I'm here too. Yeah, yeah. We're get, we got a great workout today for you. Okay. How was Tuesday's class? Good. Was it? Good, good. Well, get comfortable because we're going to get started. On this Thursday afternoon. It's nice to see you. <laughs> you just need one weight. Just one weight. Yep. We're going to do squats. We're going to do rows. We're going to do push ups. Yeah. One weight I can handle. Yeah. One weight. Just one weight. I promise you. At the Maple Street Y. Exhale. Susie Weingartner readies her fitness class for the hour ahead. Joe, yeah. I started with him in July of 2014. And he was all your only client? He was my only client, and then he knew someone who had Parkinson's, and he said, I'm going to bring her with me. Keep your hips on the wall. Roger Shoulders showed up. Together. You're on your own. Go. Then hips, Ernie, hips, and suddenly hips, it was good. just this hips, cascade hips. of people. John Wayne. Yo! Nice, Ernie. Yeah. Reach up there. Each of the Reach 18 up. people here today has one Reach thing Come in on, common. Why is this hand out in front? In case you fall. That's Parkinson's right. disease. Most of the people you saw here were forced to retire early because their handwriting. 
they could not do the job because of their handwriting. And these were directors of corporations that can't work any longer. This is a modified jumping jack. What we have found and what the science has found is that when you get your heart rate up through that cardio exercise, your brain gets warm and it's ready for new neural pathways. At that point is when you want to do those skills that Parkinson's robs you of. The hand dexterity, handwriting, being able to use your opposite right and left. That's critical and that's what is robbed with the Parkinson's disease. The thing about Parkinson's is the symptoms, the tremors, the loss of balance. They get worse over time. And I love working with people who have those health challenges and can help them live a really full life. Reach nice, Joe. This class at the run, Y run, 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 aims run, 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 to run, delay run. the disease. Pick it's grown by word of mouth. People say, I know somebody who has this. Pick Have them come. Out. I know another nice. person who has it. And so Keep that going. has been the way the class We're has grown. This class got so big, right. I had to kind of say, we need to break it out. So they started at Southwest. Now stomp into it. And a lot of the people who come here go to Southwest, but Southwest gets right. about 10 people at their class. And it's also at Sarpy County. Most people come in a little frightened, will do their initial assessment, and one of the tests is just simply standing up and sitting down in a chair. Some people can't do that. And by the time we have taught them new dynamics of here's how to stand up. Two, three, Here's four, a proper way to walk eight, where you're not gonna trip over eight, your own feet. Nine. They have cut the time off on their walking speed. They've just increased their speed immensely. They've increased their self-confidence and their assurance and less falls, um, better balance. Bert, uh, what part of town are you from? Originally North Omaha. At first, Bert Sampson thought she could overcome Parkinson's the same way she faced blindness in her left eye as a child, with determination. I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2013 and I at that time I was working full time and I could keep doing my job but most of my work um, was on the computer but the paperwork I couldn't keep up with because my handwriting and the tremors became worse as time progressed and so then um, I, ha I had to retire. Up! Up! It's kind of nice when you job, first Bob. come, retire. you feel somewhat intimidated nice because up. everybody's doing things that are so different from what you're up. used to normally. Six! But after a couple of weeks, everybody helps and cheers everybody on, and it's encouraging to know that other people are in the same place you are. Reach up higher! Higher, higher, breathe in. Exercise Exhale. is huge. They are finding amazing delays in the progression of the disease. They're finding that you can recover a lot of your neural connections in the brain and your coordination to the hands. They're finding that by getting your heart rate up with exercise, it can reduce the tremors. It increases the cognitive function. And so it is the drug that can't be reproduced. It's wonderful for people. That's your worst tremors? Uh-huh. I couldn't hold a pencil. It was hard to hold the receiver of a phone. Um, I couldn't write. Uh, it was difficult to hold utensils without dropping them. Um, I just had to be very careful because I really didn't know when it was going to get really, really bad. Look up! After Bring six months of exercising her body and mind, Bring Bert Sampson recognized up, the changes. Up. Her instructors noticed when Come she put pen nice, to Roger. paper. She cried. You know, she couldn't even do a circle. And when I gave the challenge for the Y150, the exercise challenge of the 150 push-ups, the 150 whatever, I asked people to keep track of it, knowing that they probably wouldn't. When Bert came in the first time and said, well, here's my exercise log, I, I didn't even look at how many push-ups she did. I looked at her handwriting and I said, oh my gosh, look at this. She thought I was talking about the push-ups and I was talking about her handwritten log. <laughs> I had to apologize to her, say, oh, I'm sorry, Bert, I'm glad you did the work, but this is even better. <laughs>
<laughs> my neurologist, she just says, keep on doing what you're doing because it's working. Two. The more you can use Three. your brain while you are Four. active, and all Five. of her her Imagine jumping and things, it creates new ceiling. channels for the brain wow. to, to be used in. And Wait, if you're not else. active, if you just sit, it just becomes dormant. Keep that chest Nothing up. can grow in Eyes it. Forward. So that's why Susie yeah. tells us to be Check active every single day We're because it helps it. us to grow. Why. It won't stop the disease but it certainly slows the disease down. At about nine months, you know, they have hit their stride and they hold steady. Um, and that's all I can ask for is that they hold steady and not decline. This is the disease that, it's the gift that keeps taking away, unfortunately. This like, okay, do it again. Our class sadly gathers at some of those funerals and we have celebrations and post pictures and um, yeah. we, we give each of the families yeah. posters yeah. of all the class participants and universally all of the surviving family members have said this is the one thing that they kept wanting to go to even when they couldn't get out of bed. They wanted to come to our class. This year the class lost three participants. How do you keep us going so well? Oh my God, I wish I knew the answer to that. <laughs> it's because I love y'all. I love y'all. Why I have it, I don't know. But you make out of life what you are given and you do the best you can. Bert, my girl. You did great work. Great work, oh. great work. Oh. Are you worn out? Yes, I am. <laughs> best thing I've ever done in my life. I feel like everything in my life has brought me to this place at this time. I love you. I love you. Yeah. And I thank the Y for that. And we'll see you next week. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. be back. Yeah. I'll be back. What a teacher to have. And didn't you agree? What a great bunch of students. And yes, they will be back. This WWT 6 News special continues after the break. Most of us celebrate a birthday for a day. If we're lucky, maybe we turn it into a long weekend. For the Omaha YMCA turning 150, it really has been a year-long party. In April, the YMCA of Greater Omaha hosted an open house for all nine metro locations. We found balloons all over the place. Three months later in July, the Y held a sing-along at its downtown location. WWT NBC Omaha has been a proud sponsor along the way. There's probably no better testament to a nonprofit success to when a customer becomes an employee or even a boss. It's been about 13 years. I needed to save up to buy a car, so my parents were telling me that I needed to go get a job. So as a teenager, McKeel Norvell started teaching swim lessons at the Y. The Y always is like home to me, so um, I, I grew up in the Y. She then became a lifeguard. So how's it going? Oh, it's a pretty good day today. Now the young woman who learned to swim at the Y is the membership director at the Butler Gas location. I come every day and you guys are a blessing to me. One of her challenges is to help the nonprofit known for being a gym and swim to understand its neighborhood and learn to adapt in what it offers. When they do come into this Y, they're not just playing basketball or, or swimming, they're actually like able to go and, and learn how to do home or help with their homework. Certainly not a bad place to get help with your homework. On our way to the break, four, five, a sampling of some of the hijinks going on at the YMCA's Olympic summer picnic for staff. They'll need to get a new chair after this event. How'd that go? Not good. We're back after this. One hundred fifty years in business brings with it plenty of milestones. Well, the YMCA soon realized it had a lot of background, a lot of material on file, but it wasn't very well preserved until now. I don't know that I'd call myself a walking encyclopedia. I have a lot more knowledge than I had a year ago about the history of the Y. Vicki Hallberg retired from the Y after 37 years. Six months later, she got a call. They said, we have a project. Are you interested? She jumped at the chance to help document and catalog 150 years of history. 
that had been stored in a third floor closet at the Y headquarters. The mystery boxes now had some organization as they become part of the University of Nebraska Omaha archives. I knew that the YMCA started out teaching Bible study and everything, but I didn't realize that they had the Y schools where they taught people accounting, uh, window dressing, calligraphy, you know, a lot of different shorthand things, things they could apply in their life and go out and get better jobs. Do you worry at all? As I flip through the scrapbook, I see all these pieces coming off. No. They're going to come off. <laughs> Did that happen to you a lot? Early? It happened to me, yeah, a lot. The table was covered with it. The floor was covered with it. Since many documents are fragile, they're copied and turned into digital files so the public can see them. Preservation is a time-consuming process. One can come to UNO's reading room to examine the history. Much of it is online, too. What makes it, I think, um, unusual for us here is that it, it is that, that old of a collection. Um, you know, Omaha is a young city. Omaha is only 160 years old. So to have a collection that's 150 years old, that's pretty great for us. And just when the archivists thought they knew everything about the Y, something would be uncovered. People talk about that, that, oh, I remember when the Y, when men swam in the nude, and, you know, they still did that in the 60s. And I had heard of that sort of thing before, so I right. knew that the, the nude swimming was, was, was common. I was surprised that we had um, a couple photos of it. They are strategically posed, yes. The filter systems weren't that good, and so clothing would clog up the filters. From quirky photos to curious stories, there were all sorts of surprises in the yellowing paper. They were doing marriage classes? Um, I found that really interesting. And it wasn't just one class. It was like a, a six-month series of courses about how to have a successful marriage. But it was everything from choosing your mate <laughs> to then after you're married. And then teaching English to the, the immigrants. I was just thrilled to see that they really had saved as much as they had. And we had those board meeting minutes and brochures and annual reports going back to the 19th century. Um, because that's really important when you want to tell the full history of an organization to have material from throughout its history, not just the last 50 years or, or 100 years. So that was really great. From the original Constitution drawn up to the minutes of every YMCA board meeting. These books cover the years from 1868 to 1882. We have some photos from the early 60s where managers of individual branches are standing outside of their branches. All of these branch managers are standing in a similar location with a, in front of their building with a similar pose and sort of looking off into the distance in a similar way. And so I'm trying to get the branch managers right now. I think, I think it'd be great if they recreated <laughs> those sorts of manager with building, um, looking very distinguished and off into the distance, into the future of the YMCA. We'll be back to wrap up this WWT special after this. Come on! Oh! <laughs> oh, it's close! Yes! Into the break, another trip to the YMCA summer picnic for staff as they celebrated with some non-traditional games. Oh, wow. <laughs> You know the song. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. The village people made it famous. The archives folks even found a number of pictures depicting YMCA youngsters spelling it out, some with their hands, some with more traditional means. From youth sports to summer camps, early childhood education to after school programs, the Y has served the needs of many people in the community. 150 years, that's a lot of candles. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.